Ida, friends, followers. Today we're going to look at almost free shadows in Unity. Well, found this uh, small add-on called Shadow Volumes Toolkit. It's 19 euros and what you get is the basic shadows and it's quite good. <laughs> However, well, this scene you might remember from a previous video where we were looking at Pro Builder, and this is basically just the same scene I've reloaded. Um, today we're going to add a, a game character because we would like to move around. We want to see uh, see the shadows from different angles. So let's let's drop in a character controller. Standard assets. Let's get a first-person controller. And let's place it over here. Holy crap. <laughs> and let's just turn the way he's facing to roughly that way and make sure he is above ground. Mm, there we go. Character controller. Move up, please. There we go. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> we also have our directional light. And right now it's uh, pointing sort of that way. That's fine. That's fine. So the first thing you want to do, I have already imported the, the files, as you can see right there right here, Shadow Volumes, Volumes Toolkit, yeah, speaking, overrated. <laughs> the first thing you want to do is add a shadow renderer and just add it anywhere, but we're going to create an empty game object and just call it a shadow render, like so. And we're going to add a component. Shadow volume render. I have already entered the search word. And we're just going to leave it as so. But you can change different things, such as what layer the shadows is, backend. These things could be important, especially if you're targeting mobile devices. If you're targeting a mobile device, you need to select stencil buffer. But then you also need to run and enable the 24 bit buffer uh, because it might cause issues. Uh, if you're going to need alpha ch use alpha channels, you need to use the 32-bit buffer. Of course, you will notice in performance differences. However, we are targeting PC, so we're just going to use alpha channel, no blend. Without blend, sorry. Next thing we want to do is hit the, the light. To the source, you can have multiple, but right now we're just going to add to this one. Add component, add source, shadow, color, and stuff. <laughs> you have a few things to change here. We're just going to leave them default at the moment. So, but basically, it's the color of the shadows. Then we're going to add a attach a script to all the items that needs to be uh, rendered with a shadow. So add component, uh, no, I actually think you don't have to, I'm, I'm not sure, let's, let's test it, let's just test it. Shadow volumes kit, quick setup. Yeah, you need it, because uh, if you didn't, you would be able to uh, click a sh quick uh, quick setup. And there's nothing to do right now, so let's, let's just uh, add a normal cube, just to make sure that we're not doing anything weird. Don't want to ruin our object. Okay, let's see. Oh, that was not. 
not the thing we want to do. Let's create a new cube. Luckily, we have plenty of these things. Plenty. Renderer, bad boy, component. All right, yeah. Now I got it. You have to have this open, click an object. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, now we have the shadow volume in the, the source. We have the empty game object called shadow. It is just right there, it's invisible. Then we're going to click our object. Then we're going to hit window, shadow volumes, quick shadow up. And you can change things in here. Right now we have shadow to children and meshes. Hit set up shadow. Voila. Let's hit save, hit play. Let's see. Oh. Yeah, you are able to block out the shadow. Sometimes. And th that's a bug. <laughs> but this is certainly better than no shadow at all. Uh, and once it's set up, it should be uh, quite easy to change. As you can see, you're able to modify the shadow. Let's try to change the color. There you go, you can get that evening orange to get it a more warm feeling. Then you probably also want the light to have a more. Evening feel to it, there we go. That's pretty cool. And um, then you might think, well, there is, isn't there anything more? Well, the sure is. You can change and customize the shadows for each object, attach the scripts to each object. You can change the mess. So, for example, you can have one object dropping off a shadow of another, in case you would want that. I, I have no idea. And you are able to blend the shadows as you want. However, when you blend and doing comparisons of shadows, I expect a um, quite decrease in performance. Well, depending on the objects on the scene, of course, but that's one of the things that will help you. <laughs> one of the reasons why to get a better computer. Well, I can't recommend this over any other shadow setup because I haven't tried any other. Uh, I like this one because I have tried it, used it, and uh, I think I'm going to keep using it. Right now it seems strange because there's only this one thing, but the reason I'm using it is because it's actually easy and so easy to set up and use. That's really important to me. Uh, I don't feel like having software that's uh, giving me problems or taking time to set up and you need to customize each time. This one is just set up and go. How about that? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.